You already read the title, so you know what this is about. First of all, I already have an island preset up and I also already have my resource ready. Now I'm going to create a new game object and I'm going to call this game controller. And on this game controller, we're going to want the uh, resource spawner. So I'm just going to make a new script and I'm going to call this resource spawner. In the game controller, I'm going to add the resource spawner uh, component. And let's just open up. So in here, I'm going to already remove what's already there and we're going to set up some variables. So first of all, I like structuring it with uh, headers. So we're going to have some spawn settings. And these spawn settings are going to be obviously the game object, which is going to be our resource prefab. And we also want to be able to choose a spawn chance for this resource. Now, in the next header and the next type of settings that we're going to make, we want to set up some raycast uh, settings. These raycast settings are going to be uh, the distance between our checks, which is going to be a float. So I'm going to call this distance between checks. We're also going to set up a public float, which is the height of the check. And I'm obviously going to explain these to you as we go. Uh, we can, for example, set this to something like 10. And we also set up, want to set up a range for the raycast, which I'm just going to call range, uh, range of check. Um, and then I'm going to set up a public layer mask, just because that is really nice to have for any uh, raycast, even though we might just want it to be everything. And then I want to set up uh, two vector twos, which is going to be our positive position and our negative position. And again, I'll explain these to you as we go. Um, but these are the ones that are good to have. So first of all, let's create a new void or a new function that's going to be spawn resources. And we're going to run this in our start function. So we're just going to do spawn resources. Now, how this is going to work, and I'm just going to do a brief explanation, which is also going to make more sense out of these things. First of all, we can also just set the range to something like 30. Uh, I'm going to start by explaining these two positions, right? So these positions, uh, which we're, we might as well just set right now, is going to be um, the positive and the negative positions of where we start. So let me just create a new empty game object that we're going to delete again soon. But we're just going to figure out exactly what positions I want to start. Uh, you know, so we're going to make sort of a square uh, space that it's going to spawn within. And we're going to have sort of the positive values up here. Let's do, for example, 5.5 and 5.5. Looks pretty good. And let's just test out with negative 5.5 and negative 5.5. And that seems to work. So we're going to sort of have this square. So I can just delete this object now. And in the game controller, I can set up these. So it's going to be 5.5 and 5.5 and negative 5.5 and negative 5.5 and we can just set the layer mask to everything as well immediately now the way this is going to work is we have this box and what it's basically going to do it's going to do a check should respawn it check should respawn it check should respawn it now we also need to define the distance between these checks and that is this value so we can for example do something like half a unit and we can put a spawn chance such as five percent and I'm just also going to set up the prefab immediately, which I just have prepared. And this is basically all we set up, the setup we need for the script. And now we just need to make the actual functionality of this. For this, we're going to need a for loop within a for loop. So our first for loop is going to be a float that we're going to call our x value, which is going to start with the value of the negative position dot x. This is because we're going to go from the negative position towards the positive position. So what we need to do is we need to check or run this for as long as x is less than the positive position dot x. And now we need to increment, uh, whoops, we need to increment x with the distance between checks. And that's our first for loop. And we basically need to do the exact same for loop, but this time we've got to do it for a set. And in this case, it's going to be a Y and Y here and set here. So the, the reason why we call uh, this one for set uh, is because it is basically the set axis that we're manipulating. The only reason why it is called Y here is because that these are vector two, so they do not uh, have a set axis, it's the Y axis. So inside here, we're going to run our raycast. So we're going to do a raycast hit and hit, and this is what we're going to have our output to our information. And now we're going to do inside an if command saying that if the raycast, which we're going to define here, hits something, we want to spawn the object in that position which it hits. So the position where we want to start the raycast from is going to be a new vector from the x and the set values that we've just created here. So we're going to do uh, x and then the height of check and then set. 
and this is our vector 3. Then we want to do uh, vector 3 dot down, like so, sorry. Uh, we're going to do vector 3 dot down here, uh, and then we're going to output this to hit, and then we're going to input the range of the check, and then we're going to do the layer mask. If this seems confusing to you and you want to understand what it is that I'm doing, I would much advise you to go and look up uh, more so how a uh, raycast works. Unity has really good documentation on this stuff. Now, we, what we want to do in here is we want to check whether we should even spawn the object. So we're going to use our spawn chance and say as long as the spawn chance is greater than and then because we want it out of 100, we're going to do random dot range from 0 to 101. And if this is true, we want to instantiate our resource prefab. Now we want to instantiate this at the hit dot point. This is also part of how raycasts work. And we actually want the rotation to be random in our case because we don't want them all to look the exact same. So the way that we do this is we're going to make a new vector 3 and we're just going to say 0 and then we're going to random dot range between 0 and 360. And then we are going to um, make the, uh, the game controller the parent of the object. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's because it, we just fixed it. Okay, so this is how it should look and basically this just works. So if we just go in here now and we try and press play, you should see that we should randomly spawn the resources how we asked it to. And this is basically all you need. You'll be able to tweak these as you want them to. If for example, let's say you want the distance between checks to be uh, half the size, which would make it look more randomized, you would basically need the uh, spawn chance to be uh, divided by four. So in our case, it's going to be 1.25. And we're going to see the pretty much the same amount of flowers, but with uh, different distance between them to look a bit more randomized. Uh, now, in case that we want to see the randomization actually function, what we can do is inside our update loop, we can check for input.getKey down. And we're going to do key code. Let's just do uh, R. And I'm just going to make a quick function that I'm going to call delete resources. And in the delete resources, we're just going to have a for loop that just destroys all the child objects again. So we can spawn new ones. Uh, so we're just going to do a destroy. Oh, sorry, I called it delete resources. I'm going to do spawn resources again. This way you're going to be able to more easily see the randomization process. And here you go. See, every time I press R, we're going to randomize them once again. One thing that's important to note is that the height of these actually works because we do a raycast. You can see wherever they hit on the platform is wherever they spawn. So you can see the height of them uh, varies depending on what exactly they hit. And this is how it works really well with raycasts within a confined space. I really hope that this uh, was helpful to you. I try to make these as quick and easy to follow as possible. If you want further explanation, please just comment below and I'll try and do my best to explain to you how this works. If you have any other questions or any other guides you'd like to see, also please do leave a comment. Other than that, a like is much appreciated but not needed. A subscription is much appreciated but not needed. And have a wonderful day.